Okay, guys, I'm going to set up a dimension setting for this, for this drawing. So the first step is to type D, is a shortcut for dimension, D, enter, so D, enter. And looking on here, the current dimension setting is annotative. This little triangle here says that it is annotative. My advice to you is to use standard. Use standard. Annotative can pose a little problem. So I would say use standard, right? Once you have done that, click modify, or you might want to make a create a new one for yourself. Um, for that, I'm gonna label this one um, uh, building, label it building, B-U-I-L-D-I-N-G, building. The thing about building, right? Um, you have to consider the size of the object, the size of the figure, all right? So precision, want this to be zero. We don't want any decimal place, all right? So we go to line first, line, extend beyond dimension line. No, you have to think about the size of the drawing, all right? This requires some reasoning. The wall thickness is 150, right? Yeah? Sir, yes, sir. Yeah, so we could make that be about um, 100. So look at this, look at the thickness of this and determine how far I want it to be. So let's be about 100. So we type 100 right here, 100. Zero, zero. Offset from origin is the distance, is the distance the, um, the distance, the, the distance, the, the dimension extends from the thing there. Is the space between here, the space between the drawing and the dimension. All right, so offset from origin is this little gap right here, the space between here. So you will determine how much you want it to be. In a case like this, if the wall, normally you click here and here for, to get the accurate distance between two spaces. So I would let this be about 300 because the wall thickness is 150 and you want a little distance between the wall, between the that drawing and that. So 300 would be good. 150 plus 150, 300 should be good. Could make it 350 also if you want, or even four. So I would say 350, enter. No. At no point in time should you click this. This is one of the errors that you guys have in a drawing. At no point in time should you click this. Do not click this. Never, ever. All right? Next thing, move to symbols and arrows. No. For this, you want forward tick or architectural tick. So you click here and click on architectural click, tick. All right? No. So that will give you the forward slash that you want, the tick instead of the arrow. No, the arrow size are the, are the forward tick size. No, you are gonna reason out this here, right? If this is the wall thickness, how much would, would the wall thickness is 150? How much, what size would you want the forward tick to be relative to, to um, the wall? What do you think would be a good size? About the same thickness of the wall is good? R100, you think? All right. Yeah. One, yeah, I think 100 would be yeah, yeah. R1, 100. Let's try 100. And if we don't want 100, then we can change it. 100 should be good, R150. All right, let's make it 150, the same size of, as the wall. R120, 120, good. No, if you have circles, if you have circles, the center mark, you would determine the size you want your center mark for the circle to be. Yeah? You're determining the size that you want the center mark to be. So once you have round object, you need to establish a center mark. So that would be the, the um, center mark. Yeah? So, um, so let this, we don't really trouble this because we don't really have any circle right there. No, here we go across a text height. This one is one that you must have to be keen on. The standard is this, but look at this wall and determine the size that you want your text to be relative, relative to the wall. So it's good to use the wall as a reference. 
If the wall is 150, what size would you want your text to be relative to the wall? 150, 200, or 300? Yeah? So always use the wall as a reference or the overall size of the drawing. How much do you think a suitable text size would be? One, How much? 150. 150 might be too small, man. I want my text to be a little bit bigger. Probably two, 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 three hundred. Two, two, I want mine to be 300. Probably you want yours smaller. It's totally up to you. Now, here, this one, offset from that, offset from dimension line, right? This one right here, this right here, this one, this one pretty much tells how far the dimension line extends from the, so this is dimension line. This determines the distance the text is, the space between here, this space right here, this space. Offset from dimension line, this space here, this determining that, the space between here. So you could say you want it to be about half, about, about half the distance between the wall, about 100 should be good, right? So always use the wall as a reference when you're setting up this. How much, how, how, how much larger or smaller than the wall you want it to be, all right? So for this, I would say make it there about 100, right? 100, zero, zero. 100, all right? No, that is done. Well, you can align, decide how you want the text to be aligned, either horizontally, either horizontally. Look at, notice this, horizontally, align. With align, it aligns, it's in the same angle as the, as, um, the text dimension line. It's, um, Isometric standard, the measurement is taken from, it, it, this one relates to some how the radius is taken. I would need to show you in the book or something. So you will determine if you want this to be aligned horizontally, where the text is always horizontal, or if the text is aligned with the dimension line. It's totally up to you, all right? Primary unit. You will come here to determine if you want one, two, or three, or no decimal places. So I want none. So I then set this current. I then click this. You look on here, you realize that the arrow size is too small. So I'm gonna go back to modify and increase the forward tick. So I click modify, go back to arrows on this. Let this be about 150. 150, enter. Then I click okay and I click it. Click set current. You must set this current so you can start using it. And I click close. So now we have that. Now we're gonna we're gonna use this to dimension our our figure. All right. So we just set that current. All right. So now to use this, we're gonna go up to we're gonna go to um linear linear, and then you're gonna click here. All right, now we're gonna start over here. We're gonna click here and then click here. And that is there. So you have the first one, all right? Now, you can get a series of these by clicking on this, then right click and then click, <clears throat> click um, dimension style, continue, no. Yeah, click that, the continuous. Uh, click that right click. Uh, this should pop up here. Mm, dimension should should see continuous. All right. Um. All right. All right. Let me. We don't. I don't see it there. All right. Let me go to annotate. So annotate. Go to click on annotate and click continuous. Click on continuous. This is an easier way to dimension a figure. So you just with continuous. So click there. Click here. Click here, click, click there. That text height seems a bit too large, do you realize? Not true. Perfect. Yeah, the text height seems to be seems to be large. So what I should I think I started these in too close. So probably I should have started and realize that this is there. So this is pretty much what you use continuous. All right, so space bar to reactivate. Then you um, escape. 
Now, you can delete these if you want. Delete the 150. Delete that if you don't want that. Delete this. So this text height, this text, this text height seems to be a bit too large. Is that true? Too large for that join. Yes, sir. Maybe yes, 150. Yeah. 150. Want to make it 200? I think, yeah. So, yeah, I think so sir. that's pretty much then. I want one overall dimension. So I go to linear and I click here. And I come down here. And I set up that. All right, so with this, it's easier to manipulate your dimensions, all right? So you can always, you can bring these out. You could even delete these and um, start over if you want to get them further out here. Mm -hmm. oh, undo, undo that, undo. So I'll click this and I'll bring this out, extend this out. Why is the software really like this? Uh, it shouldn't be able to write this. What's up with the software? So that's pretty much that for that. Oh, I didn't even get to get to um scale up this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right. It's now 1234. All right. So I'm gonna try to scale the first one. So the first thing I'm gonna left click here and I'm gonna rename this, label this floor plan. F-L-O-O-R-P-L-A-N floor plan. All right, that's that. Then I'm gonna click onto this. I'm going to click onto this to bring it into, um, to go left click onto this to go into um, paper space, into paper space. Now, from here, you can change your paper size, right? So for that, I'm going to left click here. So the first thing is to left click onto this to bring it into paper space or model space. Now, I'm going to click on page setup. Yeah, from page setup, I'm going to change this now from that size paper up to whatever size paper I want. So I'm going to click new, what a new sheet I want to modify one of these. So I can click new or modify new, new paper. And then I can name, name it whatever you want to name it, floor plan or whatever. Well, let me just use one that you have. I don't want to fill up a drawing with stuff. All right, so let me just click modify. Here, modify here, here. It's the next step here is to select DWG, Microsoft, Microsoft print to PDF, or you could select DWG to PDF that PC tree. I like to use Microsoft print to PDF. Why? Because this gives you a limited number of papers, only those that can print on this format. So, you know, is selected. All right, now, the next step is to change from legal to that is letter size. You want either A3, which is 420 by 290, which is the standard size paper for your SBA, or you could use tabloid. The difference between A3 and tabloid is that tabloid is in inches, while A3 is in millimeters. But they're all 400, and, well, 420 millimeters by 297 or 17 by 11. So I'm going to choose A3. Since I work with millimeters, we're always going to use A3 for now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Always ensure that this scale is set at one to one. This must always be one to one. Always be one to one. Always, right? So now, over here is important. Yeah. If you want to print your drawing in colored, you let this stay. If you want to join the print into black and white, which is normally the case, you choose monochrome. For now, I'm gonna let it stay in, all right, let me, let's choose monochrome because we don't want any color printer. No, you're gonna preview, well, we need to set up our viewport and stuff and stuff. All right, so let's press okay. Let's view this, how this look. In PDF, yes, yeah, so that see that all that come out one little tiny thing. Look how we fix that. We click this to go back. No, we are gonna click OK for this. All right, close that. All right, so this is the this is the big size paper. We're gonna click this and delete it. 
Then I press delete, delete. The next step is to type MV, 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 enter. Then once you've done that, you're gonna create your viewport. So you're gonna left click here, then move down here. This should be approximately 10 millimeters from the edge of the paper. For now, I'm gonna click right here. So I click right there, yeah? Oh, I should have changed to my viewport layer, but it's okay. So my next step is to click two times in here to, to activate this. Yeah, to activate this. So, uh, so once you click, I'm knowing paper, you have paper space and you have model space. I'm gonna move this a little bit. M, M, enter, move, select here, bring this out a little bit, so as not to have that join in this in this viewport. No. You can scale a join from here, all right? So to scale a join, you can click out of that, click onto the viewport, and um, then you go down to scale. Click down here, the section down here, down here, and you choose a scale that you want, say one to 50. So this drawing would fit like this on one to 50, which yeah. means that the join will be too big, 4 into 50. So you would need to, to use a different scale for that. Huh? So when you say you scale, you don't. Yes, I'm going to use a custom scale. I'm going to use probably like 1, 2. Right, let's use 1 to 40. No, 1 to... That is too big, sir. Yeah, 1 to 100. 1 to 100 probably seems good for this size drawing. So 1 to 100 might be good. The next thing, when the scale is... You can lock, it's recommended to lock the viewport. Once you lock it, you will not be able to do any adjusting. All right? Then I type paper space PS, enter. From here, you can insert a title block, or you could also have a title block that you insert into the drawing. Yeah? So I'm going to do a title block real well. How much time? Whoa, it's 1240. My goodness. I will continue, guys. I have to continue. Oh, quick, quick question, sir. Huh? Quick question, sir. Is there a reason why it has to be like 10 centimeters away from the, um, the edge of the paper uh, space? Well, 10 is a standard border. 10 is, 10. 10 is a standard border, you know? Um, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Um, Your class, I, the other class went over time, you know? Um, I, uh, let me. I'm trying to stop this thing now. Let's log in.